This program is presented by University of California Television. Like what you learn? Visit our website or follow us on Facebook and Twitter to keep up with the latest UCTV programs. Hi everyone, we, um, we are past the time, so I'll be brief. I'll just simply ask you to take a deep breath and relax. I'm gonna make the summary brief. But how do you summarize a conference of 35 global health champions that have gone through 10 panels, conversations, a keynote speech, and then interacted with such a lively audience over the course of a day? You can't. So I'll offer a few personal reflections uh, on the day. I listened, I kept notes, and of course, I went to uh, the reference books to say, who has wisdom on what's next? That's the theme of the symposium. Yogi Berra said, I'm following you, Mark. It's tough to make predictions, especially about the future. And then when he got pushed, he said, the future ain't what it used to be. <laughs> and then when he got pushed further, he said, I never said most of the things I said. <laughs> now, another guru is Donald Rumsfeld, who said, in explaining Iraq, there are known knowns. These are things we know that we know. There are known unknowns. That is to say, these are things we know we don't know. But then there's also unknown unknowns. These are things we don't know we don't know. This conference, I understand, is known knowns. We also dealt with some known unknowns. Unknown unknowns, I don't understand. I understand simple terms like wisdom and ignorance, but not uh, unknown unknowns. So let me very briefly go through some of the known knowns that we went through today. Very quickly, uh, we dealt with health threats, pandemics, Ebola, uh, outbreaks, antibiotic resistance, neglected tropical diseases, neonatal mortality, and repeatedly the non-communicable diseases came up in the panel discussions. We dealt with health actions in response to those threats. Maternal child health, essential surgery, product R&D, including delivery, global funding, and metrics and measurement. And repeatedly, the healthcare system that embeds the actions came up. We dealt with the context, the real live context in Rwanda. I felt we did not deal with a cross-cutting issue of what we know about people changing. Richard talked about the numbers, the speed, and the velocity of travel, but we also have aging, we also have urbanization, and of course, people are now more educated, more aware, they have access to internet, and they are much more assertive in terms of their demands for health equity, and also more assertive in terms of what the providers owe them as patients and citizens. So I think this is a dynamic change that's taken place among the knowns. What's next about the known unknowns? Well, I have three categories very quickly. One is progress and maybe breakthrough. The other is the unexpected, perhaps crisis. And the third is what I'll call aspiration and inspiration. Progress, Jaime started by saying the world has made great progress. Life expectancy, 70 years. Our model, Bill Feige, the forever optimist, says we've gained huge amounts of life expectancy. We don't even know where the upper limits are. In the United States, the last 50 years, we've added 10 years of average life expectancy. That means for each of us here, for every year we survive, we get two months free. <laughs> it's a freebie. Every year, you get two months free. So there's great progress there, and of course, we had the session on breakthroughs, there's a revolution going on in genomics and IT and drug development. Uh, it's, much of it is being driven by a very powerful health sector. 10% of the global GDP is uh, devoted to health. So I think there are prospects of continuing progress and maybe some breakthroughs. But we also know from history that we can encounter some unexpected crises. Ebola is one, uh, obviously people 
people talked about the 1918 uh, uh, pandemic, but we've also had uh, major losses in two world wars in the 20th century. We've also had famine and starvation. Uh, as recently, 15 famines since 1960, the last great famine being in China with 40 million people uh, passing away. We did not discuss uh, unexpected the planetary health at all. The long-term threat of our ecology to health and are we at a threshold of a tipping point or is this a long-term decay? There's global warming, there are many more natural uh, disasters. And also we have to be careful about our assumptions. I do a lot of work today in China and we had a tobacco control program. I went to see a government vice minister about how to continue the decline of a tobacco consumption. Two-thirds of the men in China smoke. Actually, it was done with the Gates Foundation. And the vice minister said, how, how, how are you assuming that the rate is going to decline? I think it's going to go up. The industry is run by the government. It's a very profitable industry. And the health ministry is a very low, low person on a totem pole in China. He said, oh, look at all the women. They're hardly smoking at all in China. So he was being very blunt and saying, you know, this is a struggle. This is not an automatic that tobacco will go down. We recently studied uh, China's entry into global health. And by the way, on the funding and the metrics in these other areas, I think China's rise is very quick. It's very silent and is very, very different. So all of the models that we had here presenting about the structure of decisions and the trends are not necessarily viable. A recent paper just published this last month on China's emergence in global health shows that they're doing it their own way, which is very different assumptions from what the Western world has established as the OECD system. So these are the crises and the unexpected that we can think about as to what's next. We have talked about aspirations, aspirations for controlling the neglected diseases, even maybe completing the polio eradication, although that's a very major area for debate and discussion. Dean Jameson's uh, grand convergence, which is an aspiration, this is hope and planning, it's not reality. Okay, and of course, Jaime spoke about the paper they recently published looking at the sustainable development goals of a 40% reduction for those under the age of 70 in each country. These are aspirations that all of us in the global health community uh, can subscribe to. But Harry Feinberg really put the table, put it on the table as what gives us inspiration, not just hope and planning, but what animates and motivates global health action and commitment and passion. And I think equity is a theme that does so. Now, Amartya Sen said, don't mistake equity for equality in health. Equality is everything being equal. That's not what we're talking about in equity. Equity is an ethical and moral construct. It involves dialogue about what is considered fair. And therefore, there is no single destination that's final in health equity. It is a journey. It is a value-based journey. And that journey has a set of interactive value-based discussions about our moral compass and our ethical value base. And that's why I think this theme that so many of you spoke about in collaboration, in dialogue, in the transdisciplinary sandbox, all of these aspects are part and parcel of the global health definition. I think Bill Rutter put it right when he said global health is the pin of of the 21st century. It is about the human condition, and it is about this journey that we're making into this new world. And by the way, that journey is very different than the 20th century journey. Just look at this audience, and you'll see immediately the generational and the gender transformation that's taking place in global health. It's two-thirds ladies out there, WWM, you know, compared to the stage. And that's the transition we're going through in global health. So. Um, what's next? I think the symposium points the way. We've gone through some of the known knowns. We've looked at some of the known unknowns. We've shared much uh, wisdom. Jaime at the beginning said, this is a critical time, a transitional time. Richard Feacham said this is a historical window of opportunity. 
I feel that the truth in terms of what's next is to keep your eye on UCSF. <laughs> UCSF. UCSF has a track record. It's run some of the largest agencies, the Global Fund, Gavi, PEPFAR, uh, the World Bank. Um, it's seeded uh, the phenomenal success of the uh, consortium of universities and global health. It's seated two Lancet commissions that have had very powerful global health impact. So you're looking at seeds here at UCSF. Uh, it's got talent. It's got a wonderful uh, faculty. And three who are friends I have to cite. Richard Feacham, you've been my hero for four decades now. And we go back to the diarrhea period. And I followed you all four. <laughs> He was a great diarrhea expert, by the way, before malaria. <laughs> Wrote some of the classic papers. I remember meeting Halley at Bellagio 15 years ago, and he had that twinkle in his eye, and he said, I want to start a medical school in Eritrea, and I'm very interested in global health. And I said, oh my God, this guy's really interesting, a surgeon, and so forth. And of course, I watched Halley pin Tachi Yamada down at the Italian restaurant now five, six years ago, one he convinced Tachi that he had to seed the consortium, the university consortium funding. And of course, that was launched, and it's one of the great successes for both of you, that this is now started as the fastest growing university system in the United States. So Tachi, my hat's off to you. And I know that this conference is a seed of a 10-year investment for you, but you've seen the fruition of the plant grow into a full blossom in the symposium today. Last but not least is the director of Capitan, uh, Jaime Sepulveda, who did, by the way, invent a diagonal approach. I want to confirm that from Paul. Uh, Jaime and I have been friends for 34 years, and um, he's been an outstanding leader. Many of you don't know that he was not only in charge of infectious disease control in Mexico, but he very bravely stood up against uh, powerful forces in Mexico to defend the dignity and the human rights of aid victims for treatment. That was very costly, a long battle that he won, but it was a very, very brave stand that Jaime took in his earlier uh, years. Of course, he went on to even greater things at the Institute of Public Health, following Julio Frank, and then at the Gates Foundation, and now uh, here. And uh, Jaime is a quiet revolution, visionary. He is not a, a loud uh, person, uh, and he's a model collaborator. Everybody stressed collaboration, and Jaime is really the optimal collaborator. He does everything quietly and allows everybody to shine. So uh, Jaime, this symposium is a salute to you, to Holly, to Richard, and others here at UCSF. Um, thank you, Jaime, for uh, making this symposium come to a reality, and congratulations to UCSF. So, it's been um, a long, rich, and productive uh, day. Perfect timing for my phone to ring. Um, Lincoln, that was far too much. Uh, thank you. Um, he was my um, mentor and tutor at the Harvard School of Public Health. And yes, we've been close friends for more than three decades, and his uh, words uh, did show that. Thank you very much. So on a personal sentimental note, uh, this week has been one of the most um, um, enjoyable um, in, in recent years. We inaugurated um, our new global health uh, and clinical sciences building, and I will take this opportunity to thank uh, Mr. Chuck Feeney, who made with a generous gift uh, that opportunity possible. Um, I also feel very happy about the special issue in science. I want to thank Bruce Alberts, who made it uh, happen uh, at the beginning. And uh, 
recognize uh, Barbara Jasny and Orla Smith, with whom I collaborated for almost, what, 18 months in putting this together? That was quite a feat. Thank you so very much. Um, one of the largest uh, privileges and sources of joy is to see our 45 students of the class of 2014. Please raise your hands. So these are the global health students of today, but the global health leaders of uh, tomorrow. Um, this has been an splendid excuse to see all my good friends who I don't get to see, um, the real global health champions of the world. So organizing a symposium every once in a while is a wonderful opportunity to get to see them. Um, taking stock of uh, the last three years and building on what uh, Haile the Bass and uh, Richard Kitchen and George Rutherford and John Siegler, I saw him there, there he is, who started the Master of Sciences in Global Health. Um, we've been able to bring together a very um, amazing group of people. I want to recognize Colin Boyle, my deputy, with whom I would not be able to do absolutely anything. I want to recognize Paul Wolverine and uh, Molly Cook, um, Eric uh, Gooseby, one of our most recent uh, recruits, uh, Dean Jamieson is here, um, Amy Lockwood, I think, is sitting in the audience, um, Mary Wilson and uh, Harvey Feinberg, the most uh, recent additions to the UCSF uh, Global Health Sciences family, and also Dillis Walker and uh, his, uh, her trailing spouse, uh, Stefano Bertossi, who is the dean of uh, Berkeley. So having all of these wonderful leaders and friends near uh, make uh, life uh, so much happier. Um, this, by the way, this uh, symposium has been recorded by UCTV. Uh, panelists have given permission for the reproduction of the session for didactic purposes in all of the UC systems. So this will be replicated many, many times over. Um, many memorable quotes from today's symposium. Where's Joy Lawn? Oh, you've been quoted frequently. Uh, <laughs> WWM. I, I did not feel alluded because as a Mexican, I don't qualify as white. <laughs> I certainly don't qualify as wise, so I'm fine with that, no offense. <laughs> but uh, she's absolutely right. We, we do need to do better in terms of um, gender distribution, uh, and uh, promise next year we'll do better. But the promise is right here. <laughs> 60% of our medical students uh, are female. More than two-thirds of uh, overall our class of uh, Master of Sciences are female. So uh, it's only a matter of time, believe me. Um, Lincoln alluded to uh, the 2007 symposium we organized here that led to the creation of CUGH and the Lancet Commission on Health Professional Education for the 21st Century. So I wonder what is going to be the product, the day after, the week after, the year after product and consequence and outcome of this. I don't know. Let's think about that together. So um, time to finish. Time to say thank you. Thank you to all the panelists. Uh, thank you to the moderators who did a splendid job, timekeeper as well. Um, and most importantly, thank you for the staff who worked so hard in making this possible. Thank you so much. <laughs>